All right, everyone, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Christina, aka that variety nerd, and today we're back with more WWE 2K24 Men's My Rise, the Undisputed Story. Uh, last episode was just very chaotic. Uh, we ended up in a SummerSlam title tournament because Roman Reigns vacated the title. Uh, Roman also came out to help us out against Cody in the finals in the main event and speared Cody and. Well, we uh, won the title that way. And so after that, we were supposed to have a match against Cody on Monday Night Raw. But once again, uh, shenanigans ensued. And The Miz was like, hey, I'm drafting you over to SmackDown so that way we have a champion. It does make the question of who the world heavyweight champion is over on Monday Night Raw right now. I've got no idea. Probably Seth if I had to take a guess, but I've got no clue. Uh, but we're on Friday Night Smackdown. Uh, we uh, also, well, we were introduced to our main character. His name is Jason Frost. Just, it sounded cool. <laughs> it's literally all the logic there is. So, we have Musty Champion, and then after that, we have all the little side missions per usual. And then it seems like the story gate is Monsters Among Men, and, you know, I wonder who's going to be involved in that storyline. But, we've got The Miz over here. He's the SmackDown general manager. I think that would be a good little spot for him at some point. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. But uh, let's get to it, people. So grab your snacks, grab your choice of beverage, get comfy and cozy, and let's get to it. Let's see what the Miz wants from us. Miz, good to see you too, champ. Come on, what's with the boo-boo face when I'm the one who liberated you from his lordship? Uh I didn't need liberating. Let's skip the pleasantries. You wanted a WWE Universal Champion on SmackDown. Here I am. What I wanted is the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. The champion can be anyone who understands what it means to represent the most must-see sports entertainment show on Earth. You think you're that guy? I'm my own man. You made the right call. <laughs> I Can we go with both options? Because they sound both. Like, they would both be good. I'm my own man. You made the right call. If you're looking for must-see, turns out you made the right call. I've been waiting for the chance to show the WWE Universe what I am. And whether it's SmackDown or Raw makes no difference to me. Much to my surprise, I dig your attitude. Oh! Maybe Regal hasn't ruined you. But if you think you're must-see, let's find out when you defend that WWE Universal Championship against Kevin Owens. I beat KO in the tournament, and I will gladly beat him again. Excellent! And just a heads up, I might come see your match in person. You know, just an impartial observer to get a... Oh, I'm sure, Miz. I drafted. I'm but sure. No other reason at all. See sure. <laughs> sure, Miz. Just sure. The following is scheduled for one fall. I know we're like zooming through the entrances a little bit, but I mean, we, we show the entrances here and there uh, just because like otherwise it would get a little bit repetitive. But here we go, people. We've got our WWE Undisputed Universal Championship on the line against Kevin Owens here tonight. The man that we uh, small package at SummerSlam in the, uh, I believe it was, uh, was that the first round? Yeah, the first round of the tournament. <laughs> Because we had Kevin Owens, so we had a we had the pre-show match against Dirty Day on Dominic Mysterio in order to qualify for the tournament. And our first match was against was against KO. Then after that, we went up against Braun Strowman, and then we had Cody at the finish line. So we had four full matches at at SummerSlam. We had four matches in total. Uh, but Kevin Owens has been itching to. Uh, get an opportunity at us because that just makes sense right right this will be interesting i'm looking forward to this storyline already because again like we don't really get to see too many of these story modes play out where we actually get the championship we get to go through the motions as champion so i find that really refreshing nobody's cheering for us <laughs> but there it is people our beautiful undisputed wwe universal championship Introducing the challenger from Marineville, Quebec, Canada, weighing in at 266 pounds, Kevin Owens! Woo! 
and his opponent from New York, weighing in at 250 pounds, the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, Jason Frost. He's He's got a look to him. He's got a good look to him. He's got a cool name. I mean, why would you not want him as your champion, or at least a champion? But there it is, people, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Why does it do that, like, blinking thing? <laughs> it just, like, blinks to black. Okay, take the fight to Kevin Owens. You know shenanigans are going to go down. You know it. You know it when they do this stuff. <laughs> At least we're entertained by it. Oh, it feels good to be back on SmackDown after dealing with all the Monday Night Raw shenanigans. Alrighty, here we go, here we go. We're taking the fight to Kevin Owens. We completed that task. This is going to end well. Thanks, Miz. Just the real MVP. Oh, sneaky roll up from Kevin. Surprise Kevin Owens with a leverage pin. So that's another sneaky roll up, right? KO getting rolled up here. Ah! <laughs> that's amazing. Another flash win for the Universal Champion. Oh no, what is the Miz doing? Intercepted by the champion, talk about a backfire. And now KO's begging for mercy. Come on, this is unnecessary. Chair to the gut. This is an all out assault. Although he's being smart, or GM is the one who introduced the chair in the first place. Exactly. Maybe he thought the champ needed to take a seat after a tiresome match. We don't. We just got the match started. Why is there a table? Miz looks like a kid caught with his hand in the cookie jar with that table. So much for being an impartial observer. Run, Miz! Get out of here! <laughs> Looks like the champion might take advantage of that table Miz set up. Another backfire for our GM. This is amazing. He better not go through with this. Oh, and down through the table. Kevin Owens is absolutely laid out. Miz tried to involve himself in this match and managed to hoist himself by his own petard. The WWE Universal Champion has come to SmackDown and he's making a statement to Miz, KO, and the entire WWE Universe. See, this guy's smart. Like, this is what we're here for. This is the energy that we are here for. That champion is going to regret this. Look at that face! Look at the Miz's face! <laughs> oh, that's great. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, you know, you can be a fan favorite and win over the crowd and stuff like that and be smart about it. But see, I'm liking our character here. This is great. After assaulting Kevin Owens after their WWE Universal title match on SmackDown, The Miz has promised serious consequences for Jason Frost. Listen to y'all talking about this chub barely winning his first defense on day one. I held the Universal title for so long that I had nothing left to prove. Call me if Jason Frost makes it through 30 days. <laughs> Roman's just like in the background and we're kind of here for it. Reigns is right about one thing. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. As Universal Champion, you always have a target on your back. Be careful, especially now that it's clear Miz is working against you. Oh, this is great. I mean, are we really surprised that the Miz would do this to us, though? I mean, if we remember the first episode, and he's clearly said that he just wants the title on the show. He didn't necessarily want us. He just wanted the title. And, well, I guess he got both of us. <laughs> Let's go chit-chat with good old GM Miz. What the hell, Miz? Impartial observer? You were passing chairs, setting up tables. I'm surprised you didn't chuck a ladder at me for good measure. Right? It turns out the situation called for a partial observer. It's what's best for the image. A partial observer. And that would be Kevin Owens? What does he have that I don't? Kale's exciting, unpredictable. Yeah, he's a little rough around the edges, but Maurice has her stylist working on a makeover, and there's this amazing jacket being tailored. Look, <laughs> the point is, KO has promised to be the Miz's undisputed WWE Universal Champion, and that's what matters. Believing a word KO tells you is your first mistake, and more importantly, I've beaten your poster boy twice now. Beaten him with a chair. 
Put him through a table. You mentioned a ladder earlier. Well, let's go there. At Clash at the Castle, you will put the WWE Universal title on the line against KO in a TLC match. Fine. I'm going to walk into that match with my title, and I'll walk out with it, too. He's so no, unbothered. No, no. You will not walk in with the WWE Universal title because it will be hanging high above the ring, right where it belongs. Out of your reach. Well, that's how the logistics work. <laughs> I like honestly, it's like Miz, that's like how the logistics of the ladder match work, I would think. Like you have to have the titles above the ring, and I would assume that has to be done ahead of time, right? Because you gotta plan for these things. <laughs> Let's go to the match. Well, the third time be the charm for Kevin Owens when he challenges Jason Frost for the Universal Championship in a TLC match at Clash at the Castle. A fluke and a banana peel do not require a charm. At Clash at the Castle, I expose Jason for the chump that he is and walk out the first real WWE Undisputed Universal Champion of the post-Roman era. My god, we... What, that's us, though. <laughs> We're the first champion. A lot's changed since the last time we spoke in an empty arena. Indeed. That night I gave you an opportunity, and you took full advantage. I guess. Most everyone in the WWE Universe thinks Roman Reigns won me the title, and KO only beat himself to get me there. There will always be doubters. Every WWE Universal Champion will be in the shadow of Roman Reigns in one way or another. At least until someone can break the record with the title. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's pretty much an impossible goal. Perhaps. My point is that you should take it a step at a time. You'll be the dark horse until one day you turn around and someone calls you the favorite. I think that might be a ways off. I'll just have to keep winning. A dominant victory over Owens tonight will go a long way towards answering that question in SmackDown's locker room, if not with its general manager. Miz can be a real tosser. <laughs> Quite right. But it seems to me that he has also given you an opportunity to prove he and the doubt was wrong. That's what being a champion is, huh? A constant battle to prove you deserve your spot at the top of the card. Indeed it is, my boy. Indeed it is. The following contest is a tables, ladders, and chairs match. And is for the undisputed WWE U. All righty, people, here we go, here we go. No title uh, during our entrance, but here we are. From New York, weighing in at 250 pounds, the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, Jason Frost. Here we go, everybody. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We've got a TLC match for the... Uh, undisputed Universal Championship, which is very, very exciting. Uh, that definitely got alluded to, uh, you know, on SmackDown with the chair, with the table, and then, well, hinting at the ladder. And so this makes sense in my brain. Our guy is defending the title at the uh, Clash of the Castle premium live event. So things are about to get interesting around here, right? Right. And I mean, Regal was on to something too. Like, again, like the Miz said he likes, his art, he likes our attitude, which is, you know, Gotta give us some brownie points there. We gotta give credit where credit is due. But maybe this is a test to see how much we can withstand, right? And in the loading screen, they told us about Hulk Hogan's title reign and how he had to go up against all these larger-than-life characters, and um, how he and how if our dark horse wants to succeed, that we need to overcome all these obstacles. Pretty self-explanatory. Again, why does it do that blinking thing with the, the okay? Cool, so just win by grabbing your title from above the ring. Perfect, so we can do whatever we want with this match. Alrighty. But no, I want to see what happens moving forward, you know? Get out of here, Kevin. <laughs> Let me get my table! Kevin, we have a table right over here. We have a perfectly good table. Oh, seriously? Okay, well I walked right into that, but that's okay. I got my table, you got your ladder, Kevin. 
Although I normally yell at everybody for not going after the ladders right away in these games, and thankfully Kevin had the right idea. Oh, I missed that. I haven't had coffee yet this morning at, when I'm recording this, so that might be it. Oh, I thought he was going to land right, in, right onto the ladder. Oh my god, that would have been something else. But yeah, we tend to keep these episodes a little bit on the longer side, so if you enjoy the longer episodes, great. Um, we're going to be going through the men's My Rise. Um, the women's one took us about three weeks, but to be fair, we did daily uploads for it. I don't know what the uploading schedule is going to look like uh, for this particular series, because I am pre-recording this a little bit ahead of time. And we just have all kinds of things coming up in April, so... Uh, yeah, I figured I might as well just have some stuff in the uh, pipeline ready to go. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I got. Oh, seriously? We weren't even close. But okay. We can do it, people. We can do it. I just want to put Kevin through a table. Like, that's all I want to do. <laughs> and obviously retain our title, but priorities, right? Now, I don't know much about what happens in the men's My Rise, other than Roman Reigns being a landlord <laughs> from the trailer. <laughs> I mean, that's his nickname, but I mean, you know. It's just, it's funny. It's funny to me. Let me have my table, Kevin. <laughs> Let me have my table. Oh, nice counter right there from our dude right there. Alright, Kevin. Oh, let me have my table, Kevin! <laughs> the people want somebody to go through a table, and it's gonna be you, Kevin. We appreciate Kevin Owens. We, we really do. Kevin Owens is just one of my favorites to watch on a regular basis, because just completely relatable. And obviously thinking what we're thinking a lot of times, right? Oh boy, here we go. Okay. Alright, come on. Put him through the table. For the people. Beautiful. We did it for the people. Alrighty. I am notoriously awful at these ladder matches. Oh, come on. We're so close. Oh, we were so close. No. Oh, I hate it here. Okay, Kevin, you just do what you're going to do. Okay, well, he's in here with a chair, so that's lovely. Beautiful. Now, let's try to speed run this. We can do it. Oh, we did it. Good. Perfect. Right as Kevin stood up. You'll love to see it. Oh, that was stressful. <laughs> I had to wait until the... I, I wanted to wait until the announcer was done, but way to go, Jason. You retain your title at a premium live event. We're going to see what happens moving ahead. So let's keep moving onward and upward and see what Miz has to say about this whole situation. A must-see champion. Okay, so we unlocked Miz GM jacket, Miz GM pants, and Miz GM shoes. So we're kind of at this point now where we're going to be inside story territory, which is kind of nice. So we have, after the Dark Horse champion scored another win over KO in a brutal TLC match, what does Miz have in store for Jason Frost next? The implication that I supported Kevin Owens in any way is an insult to my impartiality as SmackDown GM. I only want what's best for my show. Uh, Miz, you literally said you can't stand Jason Frost. Hey, KO, let's make you champion. This is all your fault. Is this what you had in my brand's image, Miz? Right, exactly. Being champ comes with big perks and new responsibilities. Cool. Uh, okay, so we have a whole bunch of these side missions, which is kind of cool. So we have Not Close to Finish, Get in Line, Credibility Builder, uh, Championship Celebration, and Bland Opening. 
<laughs> That's awesome. So I think what we'll do, we have a little bit of time left to get one of these sort of knocked out, but I think it'll be in our best interest to get these two storylines taken care of, so not close to finish, get in line, and then we can start to work our way through these like next three storylines. I think that'll be good for us. So uh, let's do it, people. Let us do it. So we have Troy, we have Tavish, and then we have Justine Janine. Let's go talk with Justine Janine. <laughs> I had to. Champ, apparently Tony D'Angelo thinks you cut in line at catering. What? And frankly, I hope you did. Oh! In my day, there were perks to being champion. Ugh, but this new generation of snowflakes thinks they've had their rights infringed upon if they've got to wait two minutes for a turkey burger. I'd love to see you take D'Angelo on and remind him of the hierarchy around here. Make it a chairs match, so he doesn't forget the champ doesn't just eat when he wants, he sits where he wants, too. Never change, Justine Janine. Never change. Here we go, everybody. We got Jason Frost versus Tony D'Angelo in the uh, chairs match. Again, this might be a little bit of a shorter episode, and I'm okay with that, because we're honestly just trying to get videos in the pipeline for y'all. But I suspect that uh, we're not going to be in this area too, too long. Because I think after we get through with these little, like, side mission stories... I mean, if we get through them quick enough, we might be able to tackle one of the side mission stories. But we'll see. We shall see. But I mean, for me, it doesn't matter how long the series goes on for. It just, you know, we're just trying to get through the story however we can. But here we go, we got a chair in the middle of the ring now. I love how we haven't had like a normal one-on-one -on -one match, except for that very first title defense. But Justine Janine giving us a little bit of a side mission right here. You'll love to see it. We dented in a chair. So that's pretty good. That's pretty promising on our side of things, right? Right. But I don't know, I, I was working on... I think it took me about three, three sittings or so. Yeah, about three sittings. Something like that. Because I wanted to iron out the look. Well, the look didn't take that long because I actually used one of the presets and then just kind of made adjustments along the way to it. And then the move set, I kind of just quickly breezed through it and changed like a handful of things at most. And that was it. And then for the entrance, that took a little bit longer to kind of piece things together. But I had an idea going into it, so... It actually took us a lot quicker to get through this character in terms of creating it than it did for Christina Better. At least that's kind of how I was getting at it at some point. Because I made a lot of adjustments to Christina Bennett's moveset and then the entrance over time and, you know, all that good stuff. Shoot, I'm still making adjustments to her entrance at the time recording this. Because <laughs> I'm like, well, what, what song kind of works for her, you know, that sort of stuff. But yeah, I hope everyone's enjoying the series so far. I'm having a blast with 2K24. I'm playing it quite a bit off-screen. I'm working on my GM off-screen, too, because it's it's been a trip. It has really been a trip. Um, that and I'm very much like, let's get to some of these achievements. <laughs> I'm trying to go after some of the achievements first, and I will not apologize for that. Oh, nice counter right there from Jason. I think with Jason, the kind of nice thing about him is that he's kind of got a little bit of everything. He's got a striking game. He's got a good defense game. He can go crazy with the weapons when he needs to. He's got a cool finisher, as we're about to see here. There we go. We gave our character some cool finishers that I think will last a while, and I'm here for it. Good job, Jason. We're proud of you. We did it, people. We absolutely did it. He's got an attitude about him, but I think the fans are starting to enjoy him. Don't trip over the chair! Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was like, is he gonna trip over the chair? Because, <laughs> I mean, it was right there, right? Oh my god. But let's keep things moving along. We'll do that last little side mission with Tavish, and then we might actually have time to start one of those, like, series. Or we'll probably have a little bit of time to start one of those side missions with the stories and stuff. Let's see what happens. Alright, we got 10 upgrade points and 5% to grapple offense. Beautiful. So, again, when we go for stuff with the little fist right here, that's a one-and-done, one-off match. These are a little bit more involved storylines, right? So we have Credibility Builder, Championship Celebration, and Bland Opening. So we have a few more storylines left to go uh, before we really, uh, you know, see what happens. Strong showing, I'll be honest. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. I'm sure Tony D'Angelo and everyone else got the message. Champs get their own line here. 
Oh, Justine and Janine just never change. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and uh, go to the upgrade points over here. I think let us go ahead and uh, let's bump up the resilience because Lord knows we're going to need it. <laughs> we're going to need it. We're up to 88 overall. And so we're going to jump over here to Tavish and his little side mission. Hello, champ. I hope you'll forgive an old time of button in your business. But it seems you've got yourself an Irish storm brewing. Seamus has been telling everyone your reign is about finished. Now, my fighting days may be behind me, but there's no way I'd let a comment like that stand. I reckon you show that Irish warrior you're not close to finished in a finisher match. All right, let's do it. Let's go take on Seamus in a finisher match. Alrighty, people, here we go. We got a finisher match on the docket here tonight against Seamus. I love to see it, love to see it. We are continuing our little stretch here of uh, side missions, to say the least. And, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if this is going to be our last match of the episode. It may be, it might not be. Again, I'm in a season right now where I'm trying to pre-record ahead of time. <laughs> so, I mean, if these are shorter episodes, then that's okay, too. Uh, we're going to need some extra videos, you know, filmed uh, after, of course. Uh, like, towards the end of March, I'll probably be back into a preseason season of recording, probably. Uh, just because of the fact that WrestleMania will be the following week, pretty much. And, well, there's a lot of ground to cover. So there's that. Oh! Duck the kick right there, or the knee. I think Sheamus is going for a knee, something like that. Oh, nice maneuver right there. Here we go, here we go, here we go! Leg drop onto Seamus. Alright, we brought him back inside the ring. Again, this is a finisher match, so the first person to hit their finisher will win the match. Alright, let's see what happens here. Oh, counter! Beautiful. All right, we can do this, people. We can do this. Oh, nice throw right there from the champ. Again, there's going to be a couple different pathways that we're going to have to go down. Uh, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know where all these stories are going to land. Um, I know based on the achievements, we either have to pick Team Miz or Team... Dirty Dan, I think. And then there's something about Lita in there, too. So I have no clue where any of this is going. <laughs> I have zero clue where anything is heading. But we're going to have to just see what unfolds along the way, right? Right. Oh, what a move right there from Jason Frost here tonight. We're going to try to get a little bit of damage in on Seamus right here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I love that move. It's a great move. Here is your winner, Jason so, yeah, we did it, people. We got this little story, and I think we have room for one of the extra side stories, so we'll see. We shall see. Not close to finished. Okay, so 10 upgrade points, 5% to arm power. My god, my voice sounds terrible right now. <laughs> So, story progress. Okay, so Troy is our story gate, which makes sense. Uh, so, I think let's go to bland opening next, because I feel like some of the other stuff will be a little bit more interesting over time. Uh, so, Seamus sure got served your finishing move on a silver platter. You showed him what it means to reign supreme. Keep unleashing that killer instinct and no one will ever doubt you again. Well played. Alrighty, being champ comes with big perks and new responsibilities. Your hard work has been an inspiration for the next generation. So we want to dedicate our new ring at the Performance Center to you. Can you join us for the ribbon cutting ceremony? You've earned it. They're naming a ring after me? I'm honored, but that seems crazy. It's your WWE journey prior to the title that truly inspires the next generation. Your perseverance, dedication, love of the sport. Somebody hacked their DM. Somebody hacked their account. So uh, it would be an honor. The least I can do is show up. Right? Let's hear. For anyone training down there, it will certainly be a day to remember. Ceremonies in a couple days will reimburse you for the flight down in hotel. Have a great time. Thanks. I'm sure I will. There's going to be nobody at the ceremony, right? There's going to be nobody there. <laughs> Bland opening.
Justine well, Janine! It isn't the champ. This is a fun surprise. They didn't tell you I was coming? Huh. Anyway, just down to do the honors and cut the ribbon on the new Dark Horse ring. The what now? The ring you're naming after me. To inspire <laughs> the recruits. <laughs> to do what? <laughs> Get ridiculously swollen heads? <laughs> I mean, why stop at a ring? Maybe we should rename WrestleMania Dark Horse's Wrestling Rodeo. Never change, Justine Janine. Never change. <laughs> uh, okay, I think there's been a bit of a mix-up. Yeah. Last I checked, one lucky win doesn't make you wrestling royal. Show the DMs. It happen in a title match. Lucky? You're saying I got lucky? I'm saying you've spent the majority of your time here as a mid-tier superstar. I'm gonna base my opinion of you on that. Not the five minutes you've been champion. No one's taken the title off me yet. Oh, between the parking lot and here? Wow, impressive. <laughs> I'm not hiding from anybody. Maybe you should. Your luck could run out just as fast as Fortune smiled on you. I mean, no offense, but I'm training guys here who could give you a run for your money. Pick your best one and have them meet me in the ring. Sure. I just hope you can find it without your name being on it. Oh my god. Alrighty, here we go. We got Justine Janine and fellow recruits at ringside. you love to see it. We got Olaf over here. Not to be confused with the frozen one. <laughs> now I want to watch the movie Frozen now. <laughs> it's like, what kind of a story is this? But hey, I mean, at least our dude's like, you know, gears looking on point. It's matching up, and you know, with with the energy that we're that we're, you know, that we've got going on. It's matching the vibe. Like in the little background music too. Oh my god, this is this whole story has been a trip so far. But I think we'll finish out with this story, and then we'll go ahead and finish the next two stories in the next episode, and then hopefully get through the, the story gate after that. So we'll have to see what happens. But I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in this my rise because it sounds like it's going to be just just nonstop just. Us trying to prove ourselves and being the champ and all that, and probably Roman coming back to get his title at some point, probably. It'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting. There we go. Alright, we got a signature all raring to go. Bam! See, we gotta use a couple tune-up matches, right? Right. Gotta come into this with a good attitude. That's it, people. That's it. We did it! Yay! Go team! Hey! When did you get in? Great question, Troy. This morning. Now, care to explain why I just flew down to Florida to embarrass myself and convince a whole class of trainees that I have an <laughs> ego bigger than your bosses? Right. Uh, apparently, the WWE social media That's what I'm saying. reached out to various superstars via DM, you being one of them. See, that's exactly it's what I was saying. It's a disaster. We've all got to start using this two-factor authentication stuff. There's an app and a little dongle thing I've got to plug into my computer. What? I have to change my password now because Troy Demand 1996 doesn't have symbols in it or something. This man wasn't born in the same year that I was. Oh, no. <laughs> and you have a champion who got embarrassed by fake messages. Remember? How could I forget? You're the one who got us into this whole mess. Oh, my God. You're blaming me for this? No, but kind of. I mean... Do you give money to every Nigerian <laughs> prince who slides into your DMs? You should have smelled something fishy there. And now everybody in the company, including me, has to go through all this hassle just because you were too gullible to realize you were getting matfish. See, this is where he could have used Christina Bennett, right? Like, again, the second episode of the Women's My Rise story, we were almost into a pyramid scheme. And now we fell for fake messages because the WWE account got hacked.
the messages came from the official WWE account. Sir, it got hacked. Yeah. And it's a good thing they didn't ask you to pay for your travel by sending in random gift cards. Right. Look, you're not the first wrestler to do something remarkably stupid. But when Seth Rollins got himself sprayed in the face with green slime, it oh, really no. only affected him and a couple people in janitorial. You basically sprayed the entire company in the face with green slime. So don't be surprised if you're not everyone's favorite champion right now. Great. Thanks, Troy. <laughs> you're welcome. And before you leave today, make sure to pick up that dongle. Shut up, Troy. <laughs> Well, 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 it looks like JD from the Judgment Day, uh, was behind all this. How was the PC? Did they let you keep the giant scissors? Funny. I was just hoping I could convince you to send a video message thanking WWE for the honor. I never thought you'd actually fall for it and go all the way down there. You were the one who was messaging from the WWE account? Then you and I have some unfinished business. Is that business a pyramid scheme you let yourself get sucked up in? You and me tonight at SmackDown. No titles, no cell phones, no more hiding behind social media games. Just you and me face to face in the ring. Laugh all you want, but your time is running out. Sure, no matter what happens, it was totally worth it. Oh, JD. Alrighty, here we go. Try to teach JD McDonough a lesson. I knew it was too good to be true because I'm like, we just got here as champion. Like, I'm pretty sure they don't just dedicate anything to just anybody. Here we go, people. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Beautiful. We're, we're trying to teach JD a lesson here, and hopefully this is the end of it, but I could be wrong. I could be entirely wrong. Oh, poor... Our, our poor dude. Cannot... He just... I don't know why or how you would fall for that, but... Here we are. But I mean, I would think that it would probably go for more f through like more formal means, right? Like, you know, via like email or something like that. I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't just be like through a DM or something like that. I could be wrong. I could be entirely wrong. Oh boy, here we go. Huge foot right to the champ here tonight. Things aren't looking too good for the champ. Oh, and JD misses the springboard right there. God, what a weird start this has been. But it's been fun. I've been enjoying it. I hope you all have been enjoying the start to Men's My Rise as well. Uh, I think, you know, by the time we get done with this episode, we'll have like four stories completed, which is kind of nice and kind of refreshing. We can do it. Bam. That's it. JD is toast. Nice knowing you, JD. Nice knowing ya. Ah, there we go. Gotta stay hydrated. I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> Which will probably be next on my agenda once I'm done filming this video, is to get a cup of coffee in my system, get some cleaning going on, because I'm recording this on a Sunday, so just giving you some my... I'm actually filming this on St. Patrick's Day, so there's that. Either way around, uh, let's get to it. Let's see how this story wraps up. Okay, well, it just wrapped up like that. All right, well... Um, okay, so we've got some attribute points to uh, allocate, and I think let's go ahead and allocate some of these to defense, I think that would work. Okay, yeah, we're at 89 already, so that's kind of nuts. We still have 12 points left to go, but we can't allocate them just yet, so I think we are good to go uh, for the attribute points, and then Troy the Man 1996. Did you just post your password, Troy? I just got that one memorized. <laughs> it just has an exclamation point. Like, come on. But uh, next episode, we're going to go to Credibility Builder and uh, Championship Celebration. And then we'll go to Monsters Among Men after that. So it looks like we're going to get Roman Reigns in some shape or form over here. Uh, but it uh, looks like our next storyline is going to be with MVP. And then something with Championship Celebration. I don't know what this is going to entail over here. 
But what I do know is this. Uh, we will be getting through these two storylines uh, in the next episode. So, again, thank you all super so much for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button so you get notifications around here, that sort of thing. Again, this is probably a little bit of a shorter episode than usual. We like to do a little bit longer episodes, but we still covered a lot of ground in such a short time. And I think that's what matters, right? Right. So again, thank you all super so duper much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.